Thanks very much for your time. No worries, Tom. Well, what have you made of this? So the, the, the comment that started all this was Peter Dutton saying it was inconceivable. He said we might not join mm. a US action that would defend Taiwan against China, but it was he found it inconceivable that there would be that scenario. Um, look, I think it's healthy that the opposition and the and the government aren't just at one automatically on this, Tom, because it's a it's a it's a it's a very serious uh, con uh, prospect we're talking about a war, especially a war with China. It'd probably be over in three days, and and not not to our advantage, I suspect. So. Um, you know, I don't think Penny Wong's the only one who's sort of grown a little bit alarmed over the last couple of months at this sort of this this, this inevitability that the government seems to uh, ascribe to any any action in Taiwan that would be involved. And uh, uh, and I think you know she, it's right of her to push back or, or at least question it. Um, you know, we saw what happened when this country went headlong into war with the US in in Iraq. You know, just believed all the rubbish that came out of out, out of out of Washington at the time, and mm. uh, to our detriment, we, we took part in that. So, um, no, I think it's uh, I think it's to be welcome. Now, whether whether she's wrong or he's wrong or they're both wrong or right, I don't know. But you know, Paul Keating did make one point the other day that the ANZUS Treaty doesn't compel us to join an American-led war; it compels us to help America if they're yeah, attacked. If they're so attacked. it's it's. Yeah, but look, I, yeah, it's it's something shouldn't be discussed lightly. It shouldn't be just mentioned lightly, and it should be questioned and and, and uh, questioned quite robustly. I mean, on the, yeah, on the one hand, Joe Biden himself has said recently, yes, we have a commitment to do that, mm. to, to, to defend Taiwan. Well, they do. Which, which yeah. goes beyond the official mm. US policy of strategic ambiguity, mm. i.e. keep them guessing. Yes. But do we always take Joe Biden's comments just, um, you know, well, whether no, it was well, a, no, the we, comment well, versus no, we what the no, policy no, is? Exactly. Let's, let's be frank about <laughs> yeah. that. I guess the interesting thing here is, if you look at history, yes, we have usually involved ourselves in these mm. sorts of conflicts, but none of them have been like this. If we look at previous ones um, and our involvement in Afghanistan and mm. Iraq, it's a world away from being involved in mm. something when China's on the other side. Yes, look, like it's a real enemy. These are people who can hurt you. Not, you know, it's not a one-sided affair like uh, like the Iraq war. But the, I guess it's incumbent. Tom, if the government's going to sort of push this line, is to detail what our involvement might be. I mean, it might, you know, would it actually soldiers? Would it be a ship? Would it be, you know, intelligence support? That sort of thing. But um, look, you can. There's an election coming. Um, national security is obviously, along with the economy, one of the government's big sales pitches. So yeah, you've got to see through the politics here. Yeah. I mean, Mr. Dutton <laughs> rolled out that line yesterday. He's soft on national security. I know we keep harking back to the Howard era, but they do take a lot of their cues. From that era, and you know, we we went through this in 01 and in 04, soft on national security, soft on crime, soft on terrorism, soft on drugs, you know, those sorts of yeah. things. So they've worked in the past these sorts of campaigns. So, you know, don't 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 um you know don't don't forget you know the context in which this is all occurring. And 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 the, I suppose if even if the, the summary is correct from Peter Dutton, it goes beyond what we've heard from words here. It just has that blank check ring about it. I mm. suppose that sort of pre-commitment vibe. He he didn't say there wouldn't be a situation, mm. but he couldn't conceive of one. Uh, religious discrimination, yes. a, a, a years-long debate now mm. was kicked off by... Mm. Well, the, the marriage equality debate and legislation, um, but the biggest profile element to all of this, mm. of course, the Falau case is a bit in the dust long sure. ago. So. It's still got that element in it, though, hasn't it, the statement of beliefs, which... Look, look the danger with these things, Tom, is when it, whenever you codif try and codify this stuff, right, it's, there's always... A line has to be drawn somewhere, and there's people on either side of that line are going to be really uncomfortable with it. Mm. And yeah, they got rid of the Falau cause, but what's the difference between that and a statement of beliefs? It's a bit like when the government looked at trying to fiddle with the Racial Discrimination Act. You know, you can have the best legal definitions in the world, but people out there will take it. I mean, they can do whatever they like. Yeah, because and, in this field, yeah. there are things competing. What's yeah. the right of a child? And even one of yeah. the elements in this, there can't be malicious comments. Well, mm. is someone quoting? A fire and brimstone yeah. passage. It's from all, the, from it's the all first subjective. Testament. Yeah. Malicious, yeah. or is that just repeating yeah. it, what? It, and we had Mark Spencer on just now, yeah. who was sort of saying, "Well, we wouldn't want to offend them." Um, well, you wouldn't want to, offense? but you just might, you know. And yeah, yeah. nowadays, it's not very hard to offend anyone, um, you know. So, uh, look, it, it, these things are a minefield. Always are. The Prime Minister is only doing it because he had to do it. It's not the sort of thing you'd really want to wake up so close to an election when you've got all these other troubles and you're trying to talk about national security and the economy. It's a niche issue out there. It's not one that, you know, people, you know, wake up every day or go to bed thinking about unless you're sort of passionately involved in this area. 
So uh, I suspect it's in the government's interest to get it done. Right. And uh, interesting is, is Labor. You know, they're not fighting it at the moment. And yeah, we'll see if it actually gets sort of yeah. um, further progressed before mm. the election. If it just sits there and both of them go quiet. Um, the leaders at least. We'll see. Phil Curry, thank you.